Okay, welcome to this week's installment. Um, we're going to talk a, a little bit about some review, some stuff we've talked about in the past. Uh, I have here the ATEC test board that you're probably familiar with, and we're going to build some circuits that you are also familiar with. So, um, Ohm's Law. So we're going to talk a little bit about the three elements of Ohm's Law, uh, specifically voltage, uh, electromotive force. Um, we're going to talk about amperage, and we're going to talk about resistance. Okay, now if you remember those three elements, voltage is pressure, amperage is the flow uh, of electrons, and resistance is anything that opposes that flow of electrons. So when we're talking about uh, a basic circuit, uh, over here on the left, I'm going to build a circuit. Uh, I'm going to draw the circuit on a schematic. I have a voltmeter right here. This test board has 12 volts here, and I have a ground right here on this little um, jack right there. So remember, as we what we talked about on the other video, the five basic thing every circuit needs, right? Well, we got the battery here and uh, here. Uh, what else do we need? Yep, we need a circuit protection device. So I'm going to put that right there. That's our fuse. If I take this cap off, you can see in there there's a fuse. Now, what else do we need? We need a control device. So let's put the control device right there. That's our switch. And we need a load. So we'll build a load right there. Okay, and then what else we need? Because that's one, two, three, four, and we need a fifth. And that is our conductor. And I have those right here. Okay, these are our wires representing like a loom on a vehicle. So I'm going to start to build the circuit from the ground up. I'll use this black jumper and work my way up. You notice I have it jumped in right here. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to use a green jumper to the ground side of that switch and then we'll use a red jumper from here to here and then I'm going to be tentatively hooking up this one here in just a second but first I'm going to show you a few things so as you remember this voltmeter right here I have it set up in uh, volts and it's hard to see on the camera but I have it up on um, direct voltage or for DC direct current and set up for a voltage so here I'm going to measure kind of hard to see moving my board up a little bit there you go so right here I'm going to measure this jack down here at the bottom of the screen I'm going to take this a little bit right here and I'm going to do right here and see what we got okay 12.09 volts that's pretty good. It's about we're like uh, simulating a vehicle uh, battery. So again, I mentioned in the video before, one of the first things you want to check uh, when working on electronics is that you got a good battery source voltage. Without having a known good battery, all your tests are going to be uh, skewered and or wrong. So check your battery. Make sure the 12 volt battery is good, um, and then from there you can start to get your schematic. And again, the schematic's like a is a tool. You got to have the schematic. You got to have a screwdriver. To take a screw, you got to have a wrench or a socket uh, to get a bolt off. you got to have a schematic to understand the circuit so you can diagnose it um, properly. So in this situation, we're going to draw our schematic. So over here, I have battery positive. Okay, It's going to come down, and I have a fuse. It's my circuit protection device. And in this circuit, we have our switch, like that. And then we have our load come down, like that. Okay, so here's the switch, here's our schematic right here for the circuit right here. Now notice the difference. The schematic, again, is just uh, an electrical representation. It's not a physical representation. So this little wire right here could be longer than this wire. It could be 20 feet long. Um, it isn't what it looks like physically. It's just what it looks like electronically. And this helps you with diagnosing. So let's talk about a little bit about the uh, three elements of Ohm's Law. Uh, first one we're going to talk about is voltage. So again, what is voltage? <clears throat> that is uh, analogous to pressure. So voltage is like pressure. Think water. And I know I mentioned this in class, but uh, it's a review right now to get us caught back up. Uh, voltage is that pressure like a water source, like a hose. Okay, Think like at your house. Um, that, that water pressure allows us to do work. Okay? It's not the actual work. It's the pressure that allows that. So voltage in electrical circuit is very, very similar. Um, and we measured that a second ago at 12.09 volts. Again, that's pressure. That's push. That's what's pushing those electrons. But Right now we have no electron flow. Okay, now 
the actual flowing of the electrons, that's current measured in amperage. Okay? And then anything that opposes that is resistance. We measure that in ohms. Okay? So let's go ahead and hook up my circuit and make sure it works. And there we go. <clears throat> Light turns on. I'm going to turn it off for now. Um, and then right now we're going to make some basic measurements. I have the voltmeter right here at the bottom hooked up on ground. So I'll leave that jack sitting right here. And you can kind of see it in this picture right here at the bottom. I have a ground there. Turn this light back on. Okay. Now if I measure back up to where we were, I got 12 volts right there, right? Okay. Now, before we get any further, another tip I want to let you know, and what I used to help me as a technician, was when I have a circuit in front of me, and this is about as basic as it can get, um, I want to write down what I'm expecting. So if I write down what I'm expecting, let's make these a different points. We have points before and after each of these components and down here at the bottom. So each of these points, I'm going to draw what looks like a fraction at each one of these points. And I'm going to draw in underneath it what I'm expecting. Here I'm expecting 12 volts. And this is, we're going to call this circuit off. And then over here, we'll draw another circuit. that will go on okay <clears throat> let's draw our test points right there okay and again we got those fractions looks like looks like we're dividing but let me show you what I do so right here I write down my expected value and here I expect 12 and we're going to use a nominal voltage I would still expect 12 I would still expect 12 well right here it changes I have a switch that's open so this is going to be zero. Now that's important to understand. It is a true zero. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to have zero all the way down. On the circuit that's on, we still expect 12. Expect 12. We expect 12. It's closed. The switch It's on. So we expect 12. We expect 12. Now here's where it changes. According to Ohm's law, we have 12 volts up to the open or the load, the first load. And then after the, the load, it's going to go down. Since this is a one load circuit, we also can apply the rule that after the last load, it's 0.1 or less. So right here, I'm going to put less than 0.1, because I don't know what it is, less than 0.1. And this is all voltage. Remember, this is volts. Okay, we're doing voltage. So let's take a look. Right now, I have the circuit off, which is what's on the left side. And we're going to move this down and see where we're at. So above the fuse, I have 12 volts. And again, that's that pressure that's coming in from the battery. And I'm going to go through the fuse. And right here, I have 12 volts. So I could write down, my expected is 12, my expected before and after is 12. So, so far, so good. Had I gotten zero right here, that tells me this fuse is open. And again, using your, your visual aids to see if a fuse is open, like pulling it out, that's just not really good practice. You want to actually measure and use your voltmeter. This is going to uh, keep you safe from assuming or looking at, looks like it's good, looks like it's bad. This tells me it's good. I'm using my voltmeter to tell me that this fuse is intact. I have 12 volts going through that. And again, we're not measuring current or resistance yet. We're just measuring voltage. So I'm going to follow this red wire. And again, I like to use my finger and follow where the electrons are flowing. And then next, I have in front of the switch. So I put that right there. And what do I have? 12. So now look over here. I'm in front of that switch. So I have 12 volts right there. So I know that wire is intact. Okay, again, this looks like a mess. There, this is, could be in a loom, under a seat, under a hood, in a car. This is a basic circuit, but I'm showing you how this schematic is like a road, a map, a treasure map, a tool to use to diagnose the physical car. Okay, so again, we have 12 volts right there. Let's check on the other side of the circuit. <clears throat> zero. And I bet you can assume as we go down the circuit, it's going to be zero all the way across. Zero, and of course down here, zero. <clears throat> now again, I mentioned zero is important because what's going to happen when I turn the circuit on, and I'm going to use a piece of paper to kind of shield the camera from the bright, bright bulb. So let me put this paper right here, a little tent. I'm going to turn the circuit on, see if that helps a little bit. Yeah, it kind of cuts down a little bit of the glare. Okay, so now we're on the right here, this circuit that is on. So let's go down our list again. We'll start back at the top. 
And I got 12 still. Okay. So I write down 12. Go after the fuse. I'm measuring 12. That's good. And I follow that wire over here to in front of the switch. Again, I still got 12. You could be you could write down that there's, you know, we got 12.04 if you want. I know these were the same. And I'm gonna come through the after the fuse right here. So I got 12.03. So we lost a touch, which is to be expected through a switch. There's a little bit of resistance in there. We'll follow this down just in front of the bulb. 12.03. So far that's good. Now on the other side of the bulb. And here we have, let's see now auto range for me. So you have to be careful. Look at your units. It says 2, but that's not 2 volts. It's 2 millivolts. Okay, 2.1. So I'm going to draw this big right here so you see it. That's 0, 0, 2, 1. Okay, that's what that says. You got to pay attention to your units on an auto ranging meter. Um, and that's going to be that. And then down here, of course, it should be 0 because I'm right. I'm picking up uh, trace you know, millivolts here and there. But basically it's 0. So if I look at my, my road map here, <clears throat> when it's off, I have 12 volts up to the open and 0 volts after, just like Ohm's Law says. Over here, when it's on, I have a working circuit. <clears throat> Notice it's not going to be the 12 perfect. I got 12.04. It's coming down here through the switch. I lose um, a, a tenth, well, not a tenth, sorry, a hundredth of a volt coming through here uh, up to the first load, and then it goes to zero after that last load. Okay, so if I had uh, some type of problem in this circuit, I would see that in my reading. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is if you have right now what you're expecting, and then go measure. See, I wrote down expecting on and off. I went and measured it, and notice how they match. If I have one of these that don't match, like let's say right here, I have 12 volts after the switch, but if this was zero and I turned the switch on, I would know the switch is open, okay? Or let's say um, right here, let's take this green wire, and I'm gonna unplug it. Okay, we'll put it right there. And now let's measure again based on that green wire, which is from this point right here so we're going to do the hypothetical over here okay so let's measure well we'll start off just in front just to verify again 12.09 now notice it went up to 12.09 because my circuit's open i have no current flow so i have pressure up to the open we'll measure it right here 12.09 and that's again 12.09 right there okay and we're expecting 12. Now, if I come right at the bulb, just measure that one right here at the bulb, okay, zero. And if I measure a pax beyond it, zero. So now if I look right here, zero, when I'm expecting less than 0.1. See the difference right there? 0 0.0021 or 2.1 millivolts, there is a big difference between that and zero. Zero means there's an open up stream, 0 0.0021 volts. That means I have current going through, but there's resistance downstream. Okay, there's some that's that's what's in the wire. So again, the difference is zero. If I have zero, that means I have. Um, if I here I have zero, I've opened upstream. Okay, and if I have a perfect battery voltage like 12.09 is what I had at the top, that means I probably have an open downstream. Because if I <clears throat> have a working attack circuit, that voltage won't be perfect all the way through. You're going you're gonna to drop as it creates heat going through those resistances. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful. This is just explaining the one element of Ohm's law, uh, particularly voltage. And again, to recap, voltage is pressure. Um, think of it as like water pressure, okay, like in a hose. Um, if, you, if you have water pressure, you can have the ability to push the water to do work. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, email me um, and contact me. Let me know, and I will see you at the next video.